How many islands do you think belong to Australia? If you look at a world map, you'd probably think not too many, perhaps a hundred, maybe a thousand max. Well, Australia in fact owns over 8,000 islands, with one of those of course being the mainland of Australia, a landmass of around 7.6 million kilometres squared. The next largest island belonging to Australia is Tasmania, which measures a distance of around 65,000 kilometres squared, about the same size as Lithuania or Sri Lanka. I actually didn't realise Tasmania was so big. This is probably because it's completely dwarfed by the mainland of Australia, right? Australia also has a number of large islands in the Pacific, Indian and Southern Oceans, as well as the Coral and Timor Seas as part of its external territories. Around 4,000 kilometres southwest of Perth, which is already Australia's largest southwestern city, you will find the Heard and Macdonald Islands. The islands comprise of mostly barren volcanic Antarctic islands. These islands are in fact so distant from Australia that they are closer to Madagascar. Christmas Island is another well-known island of Australia's. It is classed as an external territory and is found in the Indian Ocean south of Java, Indonesia. The island is around 135 kilometers squared and has a population of just 1,400. Other than its name, Christmas Island is perhaps most well-known for its red crab migration, where each year millions of crabs emerge from the forest and make their way to the ocean. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this absolutely terrifies me. I'm pretty scared of spiders and the way crabs move gives off a very arachnid vibe. Ugh. Oh, and by the way, can you guess why this island is named Christmas Island? Well, uninterestingly, it was first sighted on, you guessed it, Christmas Day. Excluding the terrifying army of crabs, this island is one of the most beautiful on Earth. It is home to a plethora of amazing flora and fauna. Around 450 kilometers east of Cairns in Queensland, you will find a tiny 19-acre island named Willis Island. Now, believe it or not, this island is actually permanently inhabited. It is the only permanently inhabited in the Coral Sea Islands territory. The reason why this island exists and people live there is that there is a weather station on the island, one of whom is an officer in charge and one a technical officer, as well as two engineers. Now, how crazy would it be living there, in the middle of absolute nowhere? What if something goes wrong? The closest hospital will be hours away by helicopter. Next up is an island yours truly has actually been on, Fraser Island. The island stretches over 123 kilometers in length and 22 kilometers at its widest point. With an area of around 184,000 hectares, it is the largest sand island on Earth. The population is a small 160 or so. However, many tourists in their thousands visit the island each year. One of those was me in 2016. The island is incredible. You can camp out under the best night sky I've ever seen with my own two eyes, but you have to keep your wits about you as dingoes patrol the island too. It is also home to Lake Mackenzie, which has some of the whitest sand and darkest blue water I've ever seen. The next island is no other than Kangaroo Island, Australia's third largest island. It lies in the state of South Australia, around 112 kilometers southwest of Adelaide. Kangaroo Island separated from mainland Australia around 10,000 years ago due to rising sea levels after the last glacial period. It has a population of around 5,000 and stretches a distance of around 4,400 kilometers squared, making it a little bit bigger than the 166th largest country in the world, Cape Verde. When the island was discovered in 1802, the crew were met by a mob of kangaroos, hence the name Kangaroo Island. The inquisitive roos were unfortunately killed and eaten. Just like most Australian islands, there are many stunning beaches and wildlife. Of this wildlife is around 65,000 kangaroos, meaning they outnumber humans on the island around 13 to 1. A fun fact about this island is that imported honey is banned here. This is to protect a special type of bee that is found only on this island. The next island is a rather strange one. It is found in Sydney Harbour. 
The island is known as Cockatoo Island. The island, although small, has some interesting history, as it has been a shipbuilding and repairing facility for over 130 years. Prior to being a shipbuilding facility island, it served as a prison, where many convicts were treated very badly and endured very harsh working conditions and living conditions too. Today, you can jump on a 10 minute ferry across to the island to explore for yourself. Next up is Mornington Island, which is found just east of the border between Queensland and the Northern Territory. The island measures around 1,000 kilometers squared, making it Australia's ninth largest island. This 1,000 kilometers squared, for reference, would also make it the 171st largest country in the world, placing them just above Sao Tome and Principe. The island has a population of around a thousand people. What's crazy is that the language spoken here, La Dill, is only spoken on this very island. Although the island was discovered in 1802, it is thought that the La Dill people have existed there for over 8,000 years. An interesting story about this island is that in 2003, due to a huge problem from alcoholism, the Queensland government implemented an alcohol management plan. This led to riots on the island. Over time, alcohol slowly was reintroduced to the island as the locals were homebrewing their own, which actually turned out to be much worse. Prince of Wales Island is the largest island in the Torres Strait, which is Australia's most northern region. The island sits just north of Queensland's most northern continental point. It is just 560 kilometers away from Port Moresby. Papua New Guinea's capital. The island has a population of around 110 people. These people are known as the Kororeg people. The island was first spotted in 1606. In 1869, a British ship was shipwrecked on the island, to which the crew was heavily massacred. Upon finding out this information, the British massacred the locals as a punishment. This went on for years and decimated the population here. Norfolk Island is Australia's most eastern point, well, including its territories. The island is located in the South Pacific Ocean and is defined by pine trees and jagged cliffs. This explains why its flag has a pine tree on it. The island can be found in between New Zealand and New Caledonia. It measures a distance of just 34 kilometers squared which still wouldn't make it the world's smallest country if it was its own nation. The population is just over 2,000 and the GDP of the island is around 60 million Aussie dollars. The first known settlers in Norfolk Island were East Polynesians, but they had already departed when Great Britain settled in 1788. The island served as a prison from 1788 until 1855. To reach the island, you must take a short flight from Sydney or Brisbane, where you will find the locals who speak a mixture of 18th century English and Tahitian. Lizard Island is an island in the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland, around 1,600 kilometers northwest of Brisbane and part of the Lizard Island group. Just like every other island in this video pretty much, it is an absolutely stunning island with white beaches, palm trees and crystal clear water. The island is around 10 kilometers squared and was discovered by no other than James Cook in 1770. As he anchored the ship and climbed to the highest point, he noticed the island was full of guanas, hence why he named it Lizard Island. Today the island is a bit of a bougie getaway destination. Celebrities such as Tiger Woods have been spotted here. It's certainly not cheap either. When I checked the prices, I was quoted 3,500 Aussie dollars a night for a suite. So there we have it, some of Australia's most interesting and fascinating beautiful islands. Perhaps there are some other islands which you know of. Please let us know, we'd love to check them out. So thank you very much for watching. If you love learning about cities and countries from around the world, consider subscribing or dropping a like. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you very soon in our next amazing video.